Hi, I'm Scott Noon. I'm the CEO of Audio Advice. In this video, which is part of our home theater design video series, I'll go over all the things you need to consider when you're trying to find the best projector for your home theater or family room. Okay, so the first thing you want to figure out when you're selecting a projector is actually what aspect ratio you want for your screen. So in this case, you see a traditional 16 by 9 screen, which is what everyone uses to watch sports and news. So if you know the room's primarily going to be used for sports and news, this is what you're going to go with. But if you're like most people that are in home theaters and you decide, I want the full cinema wide experience, then you're going to go with what's called a 2.4 screen, which is 2.4 to 1. This is what will fill the entire screen when you're watching a movie. Now, if you do that, you need to choose a projector that has lens memory. And what that means is it has the ability that you can push one button and it will go to this full wide experience for movies. And then you can hit another button and the zoom will change on the projector to actually fill the screen correctly in each position. I actually shot an entire video just on this. So if you're not sure what aspect ratio you want, go check out that video either on YouTube or at audiovice.com. We list this and all other important specifications in our projector descriptions at audioadvice.com. Okay, so the one other way to get a widescreen is to use an aftermarket anamorphic lens that can be added to certain projectors. This has the advantage of using every single pixel when you watch a 2.4 movie. Now, these only work on certain projectors and it adds a cost to the whole system, so it's usually only used in ultra high-end theaters. If you're even considering using an anamorphic lens, just give us a call at audiovice.com or chat with our team to make sure it will work in your situation. So the size of your screen also has a large impact on the projector you choose. As screens get larger, you need more light output to provide a beautiful image that feels like what you see in a commercial cinema. Our free home theater design tool at audioadvice.com actually shows you the brightness level for any combination of screens and projectors you might be considering. This is such an important decision, I suggest you either read our article on finding the right size screen at audioadvice.com or watch the video at audioadvice.com or YouTube. Then use our free home theater design tool to map out your room. If you're watching this video and you're just upgrading your projector, you can also go straight to our projector throw distance calculator, which does all the same work for you without going through the audio and seat setup. We've taken our years of experience in real home theaters along with the THX and SMPTE suggestions to help you zero in on the ideal screen size based on where you like to sit in a movie theater. Every projector has a range of what are called throw distances, which is the shortest to longest they can be from a screen to produce the size image you want to achieve. Our design tool will show you the entire range, including if you need to put the projector behind the back wall to achieve the image size you want. The other part of the screen size equation is sight lines. A room with good sight lines will enable every single seat to see the entire screen without anyone's head blocking the image. Sight lines are not an issue with just one row of seats or a large couch, but when you start adding more than one row, they become super important. The shorter your risers are, the higher up your screen will need to be so the back row can see over the front row. Our home theater tool will let you enter in all of your room specs to calculate the exact ideal height of your screen and mounting height of your projector to ensure perfect sight lines in your room. Now, let's move on to brightness. Lumens is a measure of light which is used by most projector companies to help people determine how bright the projector could be. There are several problems though with simply using this one spec to decide if your projector fits your needs. First of all, there are many ways to measure it which could include putting a light meter right in front of the projector lens or using a meter at a typical distance your screen would be from the projector. You can imagine that some manufacturers will also measure the lumens with the projector settings changed to positions that would make the picture look terrible yet provide the highest lumen spec. And to further complicate things, the brightness of projectors changes as you move them away from the screen, and some lose more brightness than others. At Audio Advice, we're perfectionists and want to help people get the best home theater experience possible. So we analyze each projector in our labs, and we send our customers our setup guides to get the best picture possible from whichever projector you purchase. To help customers choose the right projector, we actually set up each projector correctly in our labs and test them so you can see in our home theater design tool how each projector will actually behave at various screen sizes and distances from the size screen. We even show you what light levels are acceptable for both SDR and HDR content. 
It can be really easy to get caught up in the lumen level or brightness level of a projector. Bear in mind that lots of office projectors have high lumens for conference rooms but are terrible at producing great colors or handling moving motion, so you have to look at more than just the lumens. The processor is a key component in producing a lifelike picture. The problem is nothing really shows up in the specs to tell you the processor is good or if the processor is bad. You might think that the contrast would be one factor you could measure, but there's no standard for how to measure contrast and the numbers are all over the map. The top projector manufacturers invest heavily into great video processors which handle motion, produce a wide color spectrum with millions of colors, contrast, and even more. Generally speaking, you get what you pay for in this area. If you're into photography, you know how important the lens and the camera is. The same holds true for projectors. The better the lens, the more clarity you will get in your image. Better lenses also hold the clarity all the way to the edges of the screen, so there's no blurring in the corners. As a general rule, glass lenses are superior to other formats, although some companies use an interesting combination of both that also works really well. Some projector companies are even in the business of producing high-end camera lenses, and you know which ones those are, and they've got a lot of experience in this regard and obviously can produce great lenses. This is an area where inexpensive projectors really cut corners, and you'll not find out about it until you're wondering why the image doesn't look terrific or it doesn't look quite as good towards the edges of the screen. If you're into video gaming, you'll also want to find a projector that has input lag reduction feature for gaming. Turning on this feature will minimize latency, but usually has to reduce image processing to achieve low input lag. So there's some sacrifice in the image quality while input lag is reduced. If you're a gamer, look for a projector where you can turn input lag reduction on for gaming and turn it off for watching movies. Also, refresh rate increases always seem to be led by the gaming industry. If you want to be on the cutting edge, check out the latest refresh rate for the current video gaming consoles and look for projectors that can handle that rate. HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. This format gives us an even wider range of colors and bigger differences between the blackest blacks and the whitest whites for an even more lifelike picture. The drawback of HDR is that it requires much more light output and a better video processor to produce a great result. If the projector cannot do both of these, you may not even prefer HDR image and think the SDR actually looks better. With so much content coming out in HDR, this feature is becoming a must-have for a quality projector. If the model you're looking at does not brag about their HDR processing or tone mapping, that likely means the video processor is not that great. Now, let's talk briefly about single chip versus multi-chip projectors. The top theater projectors like these two here from JVC and Sony all are multi-chip, typically three, so they can produce beautiful discrete colors even with full movie motion. You will see cheaper projectors from second tier brands with high lumen levels but not understand why they're so much cheaper. Oftentimes, these are older technology single chip projectors that you want to stay away from. These are capable of a very bright image but they fall apart when the image has fast motion and you see all kinds of artifacts and halo effects. These are not good for home theater and consequently you won't find them in our list of projectors in the home theater design tool at audiovice.com. Pixel shift is a way to simulate a higher resolution image than the projector is capable of producing natively. As technology advances, we usually see some manufacturers use pixel shift to come closer to the current spec before they actually launch projectors with the newest spec. You can always look at the native resolution of the projector to find out the truth. Now, let's move on to laser. Laser projectors used to only be in the very high end of the price range, but are coming down in price. They usually offer a brighter image and a very long life compared to a lamp. Most lamp projectors will need a new lamp every 1,000 to say 4,000 hours, whereas a laser projector will last around 20,000 hours. There's just something more realistic about the image you get from a laser projector. But again, you get what you pay for. If you see a very inexpensive laser projector, the manufacturer has likely cut corners on everything else. So let me summarize the main takeaways here. First, the market for home theater projectors is very competitive, so you generally get what you pay for. If you have room in your budget for a top-of-the-line projector, you're usually going to be buying a projector from one of the top names like the Sony or JVCs that you see here. These projectors will generally have great processors, lenses, HDR, and motorized lens shift, so the best of all worlds. If you find that these are outside of your budget for the brightness level that you need, most people will shift out into a projector that has high lumens but uses pixel shift to simulate the full resolution. 
You'll find that we have projectors at each level in our home theater design tool, so you can easily find the right projector for your budget that works in your room. Now, let me cover two last items. The first is when to use ultra short throw projectors versus normal projectors, and the second is the key things to understand about projector screens. Short throw projectors allow you to put the projector on a cabinet close to the wall. We did a full video linked in the description if you're considering one of these. Most of them are pretty bright and can work well in a room with some light, but you'll be limited to a smaller screen size than you can get with a standard projector. But for many rooms, you can still get a great immersive experience. The catch with short throw projectors is that the projector needs to go where you would normally have the most important speaker in a home theater, which is the center channel. If you're going with a short throw system, make sure the cabinet has a spot under the top shelf where you can place your center channel speaker. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the screen itself because what screen you get will impact what kind of projector you need. So I'm first gonna talk about screen gain. Screen gain is a measure of reflectivity of the screen back to the viewers. So a screen gain of one refers to the same as a traditional or reference whiteboard just reflecting back into a room. Most people who have controlled light in a home theater room actually will use about a 1.3 screen gain, which is actually what this screen has here. It's a 1.3, which means it's reflecting 30% more light back into the room. If you had a room, for instance, that did not have good light control, meaning there's windows and other stuff coming in, you may go with an ambient light rejecting screen, which means it's uh, usually a lower screen gain coming back, but also it's rejecting light that's coming from other areas. Now, as you get to higher screen gains, you can obviously use slightly less lumens. If you have a super bright projector with a lot of lumens in the room, you'll find that you can go down to lower screen gain and technically get a little bit better picture. Okay, the other thing to think about, and you'll see this in our home theater design tool, is that once you've selected the screen, you can choose to have it be acoustically transparent, which means that you can put the left, center, and right speakers behind it so that when you're watching the movie, you actually hear the sounds coming through the screen straight at you. Again, you can match up any screen, screen gain, and projector in the home theater tool at audiovice.com, and it will show you if it can provide what you're looking for in terms of brightness. Okay, so the last point on screens is you will pay more money to get a perfectly uniform screen that has no abnormalities, no hot spots. Obviously, these screens are a long-term investment. You won't replace them the way that you might a projector or a surround sound processor after a few years. So put the money to get it right in the beginning. If you have any questions about building a theater or choosing a projector, give us a call or chat with our team at audioadvice.com. We live and breathe audio and home theater and love to help our customers find the right products for their situations. Once you have your projector in place, you can use our free calibration videos to calibrate your projector. I've also done a corresponding set for perfecting your audio as well. If you're designing or upgrading your theater, be sure to check out the buyer's guides, videos of home theater installations, design guides, and our inspiration gallery at audioadvice.com. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification button so you can get the latest content as we roll it out. Thanks for watching and happy movie watching.